concussions are an inevitable part of MMA, but fortunately due to the growing popularity in the sport, more focus is being given to understanding brain injuries and hopefully avoiding their consequences in the future. However, one research area that is underdeveloped is the variation in brain injuries between different weight classes and between the different sexes. The differences between males and females is particularly important as females are often excluded from analytical research in combat sports. Female participation in combat sports is continuing to rise, so it's crucial that we identify any major differences in concussion rates and concussion recovery between the sexes. Organising fighters by their weight class and sex is essential to fair competition within combat sports. It's no secret that a larger, stronger fighter will defeat a smaller, weaker fighter if they are both evenly matched in skill level. The focus of this video is which weight class is responsible for causing the most damage to the brain. A great paper on the topic was published in May of 2019 by Bruno Falmer, Rodolfo André de la Grana and Paul Zare. As you would expect, they hypothesised that the heavier the weight class, the greater the risk and incidence of head trauma, regardless of sex. This makes sense when you consider that a heavier fighter is going to have more body mass to throw at their opponent than a lighter fighter. The authors recorded the outcome of 1,903 UFC fights between 2014 and 2017. All of the male weight classes from flyweight to heavyweight were included, however only the strawweight and bantamweight weight classes were used for females due to a lack of data in the relatively new female flyweight division at the time of research. Here's a table that shows the different fight outcomes for each weight class. It's important to acknowledge that a TKO or technical knockout in MMA can result from more than just blows to the head. Things like musculoskeletal injuries, lacerations and corner or medical stoppages can also result in a TKO. So for the purposes of this study, they only included TKO data that resulted from head strikes. You can see with the green bars that for the males there was a pretty linear increase in percentage of KO or TKO when compared with weight class. The lightweight division was used as the reference point for comparing the other divisions, and the flyweight division were the least likely to have a fight stop due to head strikes, demonstrating a 62% decrease in number of fights ended by KO or TKO. At the other end of the scale, there was a huge increase in the risk of a KO or TKO outcome for the middleweight, light heavyweight and heavyweight divisions at 80%, 100% and 206% respectively. For the females, the strawweight division was used as the reference point, and the difference between that and the bantamweight division was massive, with a 221% increase in risk of a KO or TKO outcome. The results for both sexes suggest that heavier weight classes are more susceptible to severe traumatic brain injury. This could mean that heavier fighters experience greater brain damage than lighter fighters. However, we can't just look at the severity of the impacts but also must consider the accumulation of head strikes. If we look back at the same table that showed the percentage of fight outcomes, we can see that while there was an increase in KO slash TKO percentage with weight, there was also a complementary decrease in percentage of fights that went to a decision. This means that because the lighter weight classes are less likely to score a KO or TKO, they are more likely to go the full distance during the fight. Fights that go to decision result in a greater average number of strikes received to the head. So despite individual strikes not being as damaging in the lighter weight classes, there's a greater accumulation of them. A concussion doesn't necessarily have to involve loss of consciousness, so even though the lighter fighters don't sustain as many KOs or TKOs, they could still be getting concussed. It's also now well established that one of the main risk factors for CTE is the accumulation of subconcussive impacts over an extended period of time. So considering this information, there are a few recommendations that should be made for MMA athletes. First, an important consideration must be made for heavier female fighters who showed that massive 221% increase in KO slash TKOs compared to the lighter weight class. A study by Tierney et al showed that females have a greater peak angular acceleration and displacement in the head neck segment than males. This means that females are more likely to have their head quickly whipped around than males when receiving a punch, which is one of the hallmark causes of a concussion. The increased acceleration is likely due to females exhibiting significantly less isometric neck strength, neck girth and head mass than males, so they have a poorer ability to absorb the forces applied to their heads. One suggestion for female fighters could be to dedicate more of their training time to upper back and neck, strength and hypertrophy work. This would aid in improving their ability to absorb impacts, reducing their angular head acceleration and thus reducing their likelihood of concussion. 
for both sexes in terms of training recommendations where the majority of head strikes are received. Heavier fighters should be more cautious, reducing the amount of sparring with head strikes in comparison to the lighter fighters. However, this doesn't mean that lighter weight classes shouldn't alter their sparring frequency as they are also at risk of long-term damage. Regardless of sex or weight class, an attitude change towards head contact sparring is necessary for creating future generations of combat sports practitioners that are safer and healthier. Thanks for watching, I'll see you for the next one.